Welcome and thank you for joining us for this Local Decision 2010 candidate debate. I'm Ben Hale and I'll be your moderator this evening. I'm glad to be joined by the candidates running for Minnesota House in District 51B. Tonight I have incumbent representative Tom Tilbury, who's the DFL candidate in this race, facing off against Republican challenger Dale Helm. Thank you both for being here this evening. Well, thank you for having me. All right, we're going to start our debate tonight with opening statements, which will then be, proceeded, be followed by a question and answer segment. At the end of that, the candidates will each have an opportunity to ask, ask each other a question, and then we'll finish our time tonight with some closing statements. But let's start with one-minute opening statements, and by the luck of the draw, Dale Helm, you're first with your opening statement. Thank you. Dear friends and neighbors, it is my honor to be here today and have this opportunity to share my vision for moving Minnesota forward. I have been overwhelmed during this campaign by the support not only of my party, but of many independents as well as conservative Democrats and moderate Democrats, who all see and understand that we can no longer go back to the failed policies of the past. All of us know someone who has lost a home, lost a job, lost their retirement or savings. All of us have had to make tough decisions in this economy and have had to make adjustments. You've had to, I've had to, small businesses had to. And it's time for government to understand that they need to make adjustments in this economy as well. I firmly believe that under our current representative, this will not be possible. I feel that he is a politician who is out of touch and that his tax and spend policies have framed his record and have shown that he will not be part of the solution, but rather part of the problem. Thank you I've, for your opening statement thank this you. evening. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Tom Tilbury with your one-minute opening statement. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, voters. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you as I have for the past two terms. I look at our difficulties that we've had over time. There's no doubt about it. The economy is, is something that came along that uh, no one could foresee. I look at it as a challenge that we have to face together. We have to do things that we have not done in the past, necessarily be more creative with the dollars that we have. It's always easy for someone to come along and think that they know the answers and become very simple with it. But this is something that is very important. And I look at, at it as I've done my best with what has been given to me. And I look at it as a service that I've done with my experience and the different committees they have put me on. I look at it as this is the challenge of the times that we have ever since the Great Depression. Thank you for your opening statement. We'll move on now to our question and answer segments. And the candidates did not receive the questions before coming into the studio tonight. So our first question will be going to Tom Tilbury. First question deals with state budget. Uh, it's no surprise that that's the first thing I'm going to ask about. Um, with a projected $6 billion deficit, uh, we have heard lots of different ideas from our three gubernatorial candidates. How do you believe the state can fix this budget crisis and keep it from happening, happening again just two years down the road? You have one minute to answer that. Thank you. The one thing I'd like to point out is that we need to have a balanced approach. We haven't had a balanced approach in the last eight years. When you look at things, we never have talked about taxes being on the table. We've never talked about revenue as being on the table as an option. There's three legs to a stool, I always say. And I look at it as three R's, or the three R's that I look at. You're talking about reform, you're talking about reduction, but you're also talking about revenue. What has happened in the past eight years, and ever since I got into office, we've been basically trying to balance on two, reduction, and reform. When I think of revenue, and since I'm working on the tax committee, I have seen unfair taxation that's taking place. Unfair to the middle class. Unfair to small businesses. You'll take a look in the, the newspaper even of this week, as of Sunday, the corporations holding on to money for the past two years. That's something we have to do something about. Okay, thank you for your answer. Uh, Dale Helm, same question to you. Uh, how do you believe the state can fix this budget crisis and keep it from happening again two years down the road? Okay, I would also like to start with, I do agree that Mr. Tilbury 
uh, has been on some very important committees. I think it's important for the voters to understand that when he took office four years ago, we had a $2.2 billion surplus, and we're now in a $6 billion deficit. And he's been a part of those spending committees that, in fact, has brought that about. Now, there's a number of ways we can deal with the deficit. One is, is we cannot assume the auto increases. Uh, this is one of the things that all the three of the governor candidates have talked and discussed about. There are also uh, differences in how we can allocate uh, funds within the state budget. The bottom line is, is if we seek to continue to do more, uh, in other words, adopt a $38 billion uh, budget when we only have $32.8 billion to spend, I think is reckless. And, um, you know, Mr. Tilbury talks about unfair taxation, but Mr. Tilbury has voted for each and every tax increase that has been within the legislature. And I think that's important for you to know. All right. Uh Representative Tilbury, your opportunity for a rebuttal, 15 seconds. Well, first of all, I'd like the voters to understand that some people make up things. And it's very important to realize that that's just not the case. There is no way that I could vote for every single tax increase that's on the books. So I take offense to that. So I hope that the rest of the debate, we're going to be honest with our answers. All right. Your chance for a 15-second rebuttal, Mr. Helm. I, I have been very honest with my answer, and as a matter of fact, I, I like to point out that Mr. Tilbury is one of, uh, I can count them on my hand, uh, candidates that uh, he has a 0% rating with the Minnesota Taxpayers League. I would like to know what taxes he has not voted for uh, that have been for the body. All right. Thank you both for your rebuttals. Um, I'm going to move on to a second question about the budget. Uh, you both said um, balanced approach. You both said that something needs to be cut or, redu or reduced. I want to know what would you cut? What areas of this budget, this state budget, would you specifically cut? Uh, Dale Helm, we'll start with you. Well, if you remember, one of the things that I was mentioning about up front is I was talking about if we did not assume the auto increases. Uh, specifically, if we assumed a, a budget uh, in, the, in the realm of $31 billion or $32 billion, which is what uh, we had $31 billion last session uh, to spend, uh, that deficit goes away. That's one such way of doing it. Everyone has had to tighten their belts. Uh, small business has done it uh, using lean uh, processes. There are reforms that both sides of the aisle have agreed to would be a good idea. We have an additional $1.8 billion we have to spend this time that can go towards that deficit, and there are common sense reforms. But to give you just one example out of many, I would say that in health and human services, there are people that are drawing benefits in our state which don't even live here. They have found ways to uh, assume residency, uh, false residency, and then spend these benefits. And then it doesn't go to hardworking Minnesotans. It goes to people outside of our state. Thank you for your answer. Uh, Tom Tilbury, what would you cut? You said reduction is important. Reduction is important in the government. Every time we turn around, there's something that we can look to to cut because something can be done more efficiently. We have proven that. However, when I think of the balanced budgets that we put across as a DFL balanced approach, many times it's been vetoed. Many times our particular plans have not been brought forth. So to hold me responsible for that plan that didn't work doesn't necessarily uh, make much sense when the governor has so much power in this. Unallotment was the way he chose to do things. That's not a fair way of doing things. I'm looking at ways to cut that is fair. We, we brought forth many different ideas that could be used as a way to cut government. I co-chaired and chaired a mandate reduction group. I worked on a mandate reduction in city government and county government plus K-12 finance. And with those types of things in hand, we could do some things better than that. But a lot of those were not in the final bill because we could not get the governor to agree to anything of that sort. Thank you for your answer. Uh, Dale Helm, your chance for a rebuttal on this question. Well, my rebuttal seconds. has been, my rebuttal is, is that currently Mr. Tilbury is serving on all the finance committees, taxes, ways and means, proper local sales tax, and K through 12. He is a framer of how these bills are made, how these bills are managed, so he has more than the rank and file. I would also say that in the case of Governor Pileni, he has successfully raised taxes a number of times in his sessions that he has been in. I think it's important for you to realize that. Okay. Thank you. And uh, your chance for a final rebuttal on this question. Uh, well, I'd like to comment on successfully raising taxes, mm -hmm. but calling them fees, and also very regressive taxes. So when he thinks of property taxes, see, now that one will never get on his particular dial because he doesn't have to claim that, but he did do it. Okay. Thank you both. We're going to move away 
directly from the state budget, but kind of stay in the same neighborhood. Uh, my question on K-12 education. Uh, as a part of the last budget solution of the state legislature and the gover governor, delayed payments to school districts uh, in order to help balance the budget. Uh, do you support full repayment? And if so, when would you like to see that repaid? Uh, Tom Tilbury, you're first on this question. I would like to see them repaid as soon as possible. As soon as possible, meaning as, as soon as we can get that budget taken care of. I'm saying within the first two years, going back into it, I want to have that money back to schools because if it does not come to them, it will be considered a cut. A cut of nearly $2 billion for schools to, to have. Uh, that's unacceptable. It's something that our kids do not deserve. It's something that we need to take care of. We need to provide a quality education for our kids. That's according to our Constitution. That is what I'm in this for. This is not something that I take lightly. Our kids are the most important asset that we have in our state. Uh, back in the 80s, when I went to school, we were faced with another crisis, not even near as bad as this one, but at the time it was very bad. And uh, Governor Perpich said, we're going to make this the brain state. I want to see investment back to where our schools need to be. We cannot continue to borrow from our schools. Thank you. Uh, Dale Helm, your answer to the same question. Uh, do you support full repayment of the delayed education funding, and if so, when? Uh, this is actually one issue that Mr. Tilbury and I agree on. I am very much a pro-education candidate. <coughs> I do believe that our children are our most important asset, and they are in competition in a global economy. Now, with that being said, I would also like to see the repayment as soon as possible. I understand that currently, uh, you know, the DFL candidate has not come forward with what he wishes to do. The independent candidate and the Republican candidate have talked about uh, 2014, 2015. Uh, I would like to see it sooner than that. But one thing I would like to draw a difference when we're talking about education. Uh, I would say that my opponent is a big education person that has supported the status quo. I think we need to return to the reform which has made us great in Minnesota. When I was a kid growing up in Minnesota, we were known for our world-class education because we embraced reform and cutting edge technology and uh, uh, systems for how we were teaching our kids. And we need to go back to that again. Okay. I, uh Tom Tilbury, your opportunity for a 15 second rebuttal if you have anything on this question. I would say that cutting edge is very important. I mean, look at my record, um, let's call it, if he wants to call it status quo, that is not the case when someone has to chair a mandate reduction situation and that's what I had done. Okay. And Dale, Helm, your opportunity for a rebuttal on this question. Yes, when I'm referring to status quo, I'm referring to what's called maintenance funding. I took it upon myself to go to the Capitol and actually talk with some of the committee members that Mr. Tilbury serves on, and specifically his chair. And the reality is, is that he does not want reforms. He's made that clear. He wants maintenance funding. That's not good leadership, in my opinion. Thank you both. We're going to move away from education now and uh, move on to our next topic. All three candidates for governor have said that they would like to find a way to build a new Viking stadium.